I'll just explain a little bit um, as to how we go about producing an avalanche forecast and how we get to this stage and what goes on in the background. In the five areas of Scotland that we operate currently, um, on a daily basis, forecasters will go out into the mountains. Um, and in determining where they go into the mountains on a daily basis, they will have two objectives at the start of the day. The first thing is that they'll, be, they'll either investigate a layer or a weakness that we've identified before and we want to check out, we want to check how that's behaving or how that's developing. And the second thing, which is most common, is we have such a dynamic and changeable situation um, in, in, the, in, in the Scottish mountains that things change very, very rapidly. So overnight, probably, the wind will have changed, the snow will have been distributed in different places, and so we really need to go to those places where we feel that the hazard is going to be highest. And obviously we don't go into the, the places where it's um, serious for us, we go to a place that represents those serious places, so a small safe location. <clears throat> and so we will go to that place, we will look at the, we do a snow profile, uh, we will also carry out observations when we're, we're going to that place and that is just simple observations where we look at the wind, we look at where the snow is blowing, we look at how it's blowing, we look at where the new snow is being distributed, um, we feel the temperature of the snow, we look at whether it's light or whether it's heavy, so all these factors we take on board as we're traveling to the location. Then if we identify something that is you know, a weakness or instability, it's very easy to be distracted by that. But the most important thing is to then travel and to put that observation in context. So it may be that we've identified a weakness, but it might only be in very isolated places. So if we didn't travel, if we didn't explore the landscape, we would really get a false impression of what the avalanche hazard level would be. So it's very important to travel. So we travel different aspects to see how it's distributed and also we travel uh, at different altitudes so that we know when that instability um, or that transition starts um, and that really helps us formulate the avalanche hazard report. So that when we get back we, we then will have a pretty good idea of what we've seen, what we have seen and then we'll create the observed um, avalanche hazard report. Then, of course, what we will do, we will get the weather forecast. And the weather forecast we get is, is, a, is a specific one for us that has been created by the Met Office team in Aberdeen. And they use the information from the su supercomputers down in Exeter, so we get a fairly detailed hour by hour um, weather forecast with temperature grade temperatures, with freezing levels and wind directions. So that then we use to create our avalanche hazard forecast. Sometimes that's quite challenging. It's, it can be very changeable and dynamic. And so what we, we often do is forecasters for the different areas, we, we, we have a chat on a daily basis and we discuss what we've seen. We pool ideas. We, we consider quite carefully what we're going to put in our, our, our avalanche hazard report. So we write that down. We compile the report and then we send it to the main office at Glenmore and there the reports are verified, um, checked for typos and see if they're consistent and then they get published um, onto the website later in the afternoon.